John 8, 58. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham's, I am. Now, Stafford's argument is that here, Jesus, Jesus is not claiming the divine name of Exodus 3.14. Listen to the argument as I prepare this. Jesus is not claiming the divine name of Yahweh, Jehovah, in Exodus 3.14 because it's not a name. I am is not being used as a name. And I am doesn't mean Jehovah. Now, one of his arguments is this. If the word I am was a divine title, this is his argument to Gilly. If the word I am was a divine title, meaning one of the names of God, then why here? John 8, 24. And one of his 15 subscribers got elated. Oh, good one, Stafford. Oh, here's his argument. Okay. John 8, 24, 25. Therefore, I said to you that you'll die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he, and it's the same in Greek, ego me, you'll die in your sins. So here's Stafford's point. So they were saying to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, what I've been saying to you from the beginning. So his argument is, if the words I am was the name of God, pay attention to his objection. Are you ready for the objection? If the words I am, ego me, was the name of God, and the Jews knew that this was one of God's name, why then did they ask, who are you? Didn't they know that he just claimed to be God because he applied God's name, I am? That's one of they would say, Oh, so you're making yourself out to be God? They didn't understand him to be claiming to be God by using I am. So they didn't take I am as the name of God. Unless you believe I am, well, who are you then? Nor did they try to stone him. That's his argument. You understand his argument? I have to make sure you understand his argument. So I can now pulverize and destroy his argument. Okay? This is all preparatory. The textual issues, everything. So if the words I am, ego e me, are words that function as one of the names of God, that one of God's names happens to be I am, why is it over here when he says, unless you believe I am, ego e me, they didn't understand that he was saying he's God. Because they asked him, well, who are you then? Nor did they try to stone him for saying I am. You understand the argument? Are you guys playing Shen Clive before I send you to Iran to make another mess? CZ. It's actually much better than you think. You don't understand his argument. It'll pulverize you if you're not listening. Don't be that arrogant before he humbles you. I've studied the man for years. I understand his arguments. I'll show you how to decimate it. So I can't move on to the refutation if you don't understand his point. His point is the words I am, Greek ego me, or in Hebrew, anihu, anokihu, they are not titles of God. The I am, that phrase, is not one of God's names. It's not. If it was a name of God, then when Jesus says to them, unless you believe that I am, you'll die in your sins. And if here I am was one of the ways of speaking of God, one of his names or titles, then why did he say, who are you then? They would have known. If he said I am, that means I'm God. Because I am is the phrase one of the ways to refer to God. And then, why did they try to stone him? And why did they say, who are you? Because it's not one of his names. You understand his argument? John 8, 24, 25 proves that the I am phrase is not a name for God, according to Stafford. Because if it was one of God's names, then why did they say, who are you? They would know. Oh, he just claimed to be God. And they would try to stone him. So this is his objection. If we got the objection, so what does Stafford say is the meaning of I am, unless you believe I am? He'll tell you that in the context, Jesus is saying, unless you believe I am the Messiah. Because in the context, it's about his Messiahship. So when the Lord says, unless you believe I am, and then you'll know that I am, it means then you're going to know I am the Messiah, not that I'm God. So are you ready to pulverize this objection? 
Are we ready to pulverize this objection? And I'm not going to decimate Stafford's fake God because his God is not real. His Jesus is fake. It isn't of the true spirit. He's possessed the right, but not of the true spirit. May we be possessed and filled by the true Holy Spirit. May our loved ones, my daughters, be filled by the true Holy Spirit because we have the true God who's triune. The triune God lives. Stafford's God doesn't exist. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. We ready? Is Jesus saying, unless you believe I am the Messiah? Well, it depends on what you think the Messiah is. Or is he saying, unless you believe I am God? Yeah. Now, I don't expect that the Jews would get it. That Christ is saying that unless you believe I am God, you'll die in your sins because they are shocked, they are baffled, they are horrified, they are scandalized that a flesh and blood Jew speaks this way. So let me unpack it as I go sit down. Number one, the Jews are confronting a man whom they see is a flesh and blood Jew like them so they're hearing this jew say things that no god-fearing jew would dare say so number two because of what jesus is saying about himself the jews are scandalized they're shocked they're getting discombobulated they're getting baffled they're getting rocked at the very core of their foundations because they don't know how to handle this. Because their reaction is disbelief. No way. You understand? It's like, wait, 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 wait. Did we just hear you say what you just said? So they can't believe it. They're getting discombobulated. They're shutting down mentally because they can't believe what they're hearing from this man. So why would you expect that they're going to get it right away? Why wouldn't you expect that the reaction would be disbelief? Shock, right? Scandalized, discomb discombobulation, because they can't figure out what is he. What do you mean? Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean? That unless we believe you, you are what you say you are. That you're this. I am. I am what? What? You're not trying to suggest what we think you're suggesting, right? You get my point. So why would I expect the Jews? to get it right away when they're being shocked to the very core of their foundation, they're being rocked, they're being scandalized by what a fellow Jew is saying, and that first reaction is like denial. No, 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 that, that, there's no way. No, that, that's, he couldn't have said what he just said, right? But what matters is what Jesus goes on to say and how Jesus clarifies the I am. So, number one, I am not at all surprised that the Jews don't get it. They don't get the implication of the I am statements. Because for them, this is earth shattering, this is scandalous, and to them it's blasphemous. So they can't believe a Jew would speak like this. So the first reaction is shock. They're numbed with disbelief. No way. No, that, but more importantly, number two, how does Jesus break down? How does Jesus explain? How does Jesus explicate the I am sayings? That's what's important. And then as he explains the I am sayings, as he breaks down the I am sayings, and as he further clarifies, we end with, now it sinks in. Now they think, yep, he's claiming to be. God, and now they want to kill him because they don't believe it. Everyone with me there? Don't give him too much credit. He's not as smart as Arius, and I'm not as holy and knowledgeable as Athanasius. Do you understand the point? I don't need to repeat it again, right? You understand? Put yourself in their shoes. These are historical accounts, events that really transpired. Put yourself in their shoes and see it from their perspective. So if you're in their shoes and a man comes and he speaks as God, your first reaction is, you're going to laugh it off. The guy's crazy. 
Next reaction is you're scandalized. Who the hell do you think you are? It's not going to be immediately, right, where you're getting it and it sinks in. It's going to take time to sink in, and that's what the Lord does. Throughout the entire chapter, he breaks down, clarifies what he means and who he claims to be so that by the end, they get it, and now they want to kill him. So now I'm going to break down the context and show you that Jesus is saying more than he's merely the Messiah. He is claiming to be God in the flesh who's not the Father. Now I'm going to prove it. Are we ready? Now I'm going to prove it. Because before we get to 24, let's go back to verse 12. Now clearly they know he's not the Father. Okay, let me read 12. We're going to read here. Because see, they still don't get it to 20. Then Jesus again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will never walk in the darkness. This is going to be key. But we'll have the light of life. So the Pharisee said to him, you're bearing witness about yourself. That's what you claim. Your witness is not true because we don't know who you are. Jesus answered and said to them, even if I bear witness about myself, my witness is true. Why? For I know where I came from and where I'm going. I know who I am. Who is he? The unique divine son of God, equal to the father, who cannot lie and speaks the truth. But that's not good enough for you because you don't believe in who I am. But you do not know where I come from or where I'm going. So I'm going to bring you another witness. You judge according to the flesh. I'm not judging anyone. But even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I'm not alone in it, but I and the father who sent me. Even in your law, it has been written. That the witness of two men is true. I am he who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. Now, how was the Father bearing witness? Through the miracles. That's why Jesus says, believe the miracles I'm doing. That's proof the Father is with me, working with me. We work together, and he's confirming what I'm saying. He's amening what I'm saying. The miracles prove it. All right? So pay attention. But they still don't get who he's talking about. So they were saying to him, where is your father? You see, they don't get it. Why the hell would I expect them to get the fact that when he says, I am, he's claiming to be God in the flesh, Stafford. They can't even figure out who is his father. They don't get who he's referring to, Stafford. Jesus answered, you neither know me, you know neither me nor my father. For you, if you knew me, you would know my father also. These words he spoke in the treasury as he was teaching in the temple, and no one sees them because his hour had not yet come. Right? So why would I expect them to get the fact that he's claiming to be God when he uses the I am statements when they can't even figure out who his father is? My father bears witness of me. Well, who's your father? You still don't get it? Hello? So who's the stupid one? Kelly, even though he's stupid, or Stafford? for being this stupid to resort to such pathetic arguments. You get it now? Gee, I'm impressed with your argument, Stafford. Remember, he's the best Aryan apologist. He is. And look how terrible he is, how, how much he sucks, his arguments. Why? Because we have the truth. The triune God is the true God. Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. He'll return as Jehovah in the flesh. The Bible is Trinitarian. So all of you that contradict it by their very nature are easily destroyed if you know your Bible and are guided by the Spirit. Okay, now, let me show you that when Jesus says, I am, he's not claiming to be simply the Messiah. What's the first proof? Let's go here. Okay, John 8, 12. Okay, John 8, 12. Watch who he is. Okay. John 8, 12. Okay, get ready now for some fun. And I don't know if I'll have time for the second argument because I want to wrap it up within 20 minutes, Lord Wing, so I can get ready for the debate. Get ready. You ready? John 8, 12. Okay. Now, let me prove to you that when he says, I am, he means more than I am the Messiah. He means more than, oh, I am the Son of God in the sense that I'm one of the sons of God, part of a heavenly council. He means 
I am the Messiah in that I am the anointed one who is God in the flesh, one with the Father, equal to him in essence and glory. Okay? Are you ready for the evidence? John 8, 12. All right. Then Jesus again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So he is the light that gives you light, that enlightens you, and whose light dwells in you to lighten your path, right? If you believe in me, I will give you the light that leads to life, the illumination for you to find life, and that life is found in me. Who is the source of that light? Jesus. I am the light of the world. Now. Here's the nightmare for Greg, the Aryan heretic. You ready? Here's the nightmare. John 1, 4 to 5. Who is Jesus? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Do you catch it here? The prologue is simply pointing out what the historical Jesus said. I am the light of the world, and if you believe in me, you'll have the light of life. Why? Because he is the source of life. And when you trust in him and receive his light, that light brings you the life that comes from him. He is life. And his life is what gives you the illumination to find life by faith in him. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. Okay, we got that point. Not only is this the only place where Jesus says he is the life okay let me just show you let's hammer this point to bury stafford's fake god david i'm about to remove you don't shut up and be patient okay so if you follow christ who's the light of the world he'll give you the light that energizes you and gives you life why because his light it's what illuminates you to find life in him because life is from him. How do I know? John 11, 25, 26. John 11, 25 to 26. Okay. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection, the life. I, I. Now, according to Stafford, this is a creature who is not Jehovah. So a creature says, I am the resurrection, the life. See why he's a blasphemer and tool of Satan? Use of the dragon. So I keep challenging him, which he'll never answer. How many of you are going to bet me? He cannot answer these objections when I say, show me a single verse in the Old Testament. Because the New Testament does not contradict the Old Testament. Show me a single verse in the Old Testament where a creature is said to be the life, the resurrection, Show me. Show me that there's a creature alongside of God, and that creature says, I am the resurrection of life. Show me. All right? He who believes in me will, leave, will live even if he dies, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die, ever. Do you believe this? John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. I myself am the life. I myself the resurrection. No one comes to the Father but through me. Again, Stafford. Guys, how many of you guys will bet me he'll never answer this? Will you answer this? Jesus Yahweh, that's not a translation. That's a paraphrase. Take it easy before I get you out of here. I'm going to get you out of here for quoting that. That's a paraphrase. That's not what the Aramaic literally says. Okay? Here's my challenge, Stafford. Show me in the Old Testament a spirit creature in heaven alongside of God who says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Please. Why can't you answer this, you Bible pervert? Why don't you answer this if you're not a coward and your God is real? But now it's going to get worse. Show me in the Old Testament. Show me in the Old Testament where a spirit creature is said to be the one who has life in himself and that life he gives to others. Please. 
You guys think he'll answer me? Anyone think he'll even answer me? Will he answer me? Please. A creature in the Old Testament who says or said of him, in this creature is life, and that creature gives life to everyone else. So does he give life to himself, you Bible pervert? Your God is fake, Stafford. You are of the dragon. Repent. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness is not overtaken. Now watch the burial. John 1, 8 to 10. John the Baptist was not the light. The Baptist was not the light. But he came to bear witness about the light. He came to bear witness about the light. He came to testify about Jesus. Now, who is Jesus? There was the true light, which coming into the world enlightens everyone. Jesus is who? He is the true light, the source of light, who brings illumination to everyone. He then was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Now, how many of you are going to bet me he's not going to answer this question? Okay. Here's my challenge, Stafford. I know you're watching this. Bible pervert. Worse than Kelly. At least Kelly worships the true God, even though he's stupid. Doesn't know how to defend it. Bible pervert. Don't play clips of arguments I destroy your Jude 9 and Zechariah 3, which you've never recovered from. And your 1,000-hour response, please show me in the Old Testament where a creature is said to be the true light, where a spirit creature alongside of Jehovah is said to be the true light. And I want you to explain how can the creature be the true light because true here means source of light. And Safford acknowledges this. Why is it that Jesus, the creature, is the source of light when the source of light can only be the creator, Jehovah? And here's proof. Here's proof. Psalm 36, 9. Speaking of Jehovah, for with you, Jehovah, is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. You see why this is humiliating for this Bible pervert? The Old Testament says the source of life is Jehovah. The Old Testament says, it is Jehovah's light that illuminates us. But according to this Bible pervert, the creature, not the creator Jehovah, is the source of light. The creature, not Jehovah, is the fountain of light because life comes from him. He is the resurrection life and the life. See how this buries his Arianism? You see how this buries his Arianism? Are you seeing it, right? And this is just part one. I had to prepare the groundwork for what's to come. Oh, it's going to get so bad for him. See it? So understand what this Bible pervert who's possessed by an evil spirit until he repents is telling you. The creature, Archangel Michael, he is the true light, yet the Old Testament says Jehovah is the true light. The creature, the archangel Michael, he is the resurrection and the life, and it's from his life we receive life and illumination. Old Testament says Jehovah is the life, and he is the source of life, and receive life and illumination from him. See the blasphemy? Psalm 27.1. Yahweh is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahweh is a strong defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? You see why his God is fake, his religion is fake, and why he's getting destroyed and obliterated and annihilated? Only Trinitarianism can make sense of this. Only Trinitarians can make sense of it. Yes, Jesus is not a creature. He is the almighty creator, Jehovah in the flesh. So yes, as the creator, he is the true light, the source of light. Light. We receive light from him, and he is the source of light because he's not a creature, he's Jehovah. So he is the light. He is the resurrection. He's the one who gives us life. He's the one who gives us illumination. But he's not the only person. 
The Father is Jehovah. The Spirit is Jehovah. So Jesus, with the Father and the Spirit, the three is the one God. They are the true light. They are the source of life. They are the life. This is why the Bible says this. We're going to wrap it up more in part two. Okay? Watch here. Notice three and only three. There is no fourth, Stafford. Only three. And these three alone, look what it says about them. Okay? T tell me, coincidence? These three alone? John 5, 21. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life. See, the Father gives life because he's Jehovah. Even so, the Son also gives life to whom he wishes because the Son is Jehovah. John 5, 21. But wait, John 6, 63. The Spirit is the one who gives life. Is it a coincidence? Three and only three. Only the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are set to give life. The Spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I've spoken to you are spirit in our life. So the spirit gives life. John 6, 63. The son gives life to whom he wishes. John 5, 21. The father gives life. John 5, 21. Trinity right in front of your eyes.